You're gonna put this thing on too. I don't know if you can see, but you're gonna put you're gonna put your body through here like this, and it's gonna keep you warm as a pumpkin, man. It's just lovely. <laughs> What's up everybody, Global Vagrant, I'm Joseph, I'm back with Murray, we're in China. Just want to talk to you about one thing real quick about the culture in China that I feel like is pretty huge here and a lot of people in the West may not, if they have heard of it, they may not understand it completely and that is e-bikes, yeah. an electric bike and uh, they're huge here. But basically they're just electric so you charge them, they're battery powered and they'll go about like, uh, how far will it? Uh, 50 kilometers on a full okay. battery, um, and that's a cheap one. Uh, if you want to splurge a little bit, you can get that thing to go up to 80 kilometers, 50 miles. Which is the news? Yeah, that is. Yeah, the, our friend had a news. So yeah, if you want to get the uh, higher class bikes, you get a lot of advantages with them. So the news, yeah, like he was saying, they can go further, they can go a little bit faster. The biggest feature with them is they have a battery that when you open up the seat, because a lot of them they have these charging stations. So you have to pull up to the charging station, you have to pay money, and then you plug in and you charge up. It's cheap, but it's an inconvenience because you have to have the charging station. For instance, if you're going to play uh, basketball or something, and you drive to the basketball court, but there's no uh, charging station near there, you're not gonna be able to charge your battery. Well, if it's far away, then your friends wanna go eat or something. You can't go eat and then go back home. You may not have enough battery for it if it's far away, depending on the distance. But with the news, and this is a little bit of a new advertisement, is you can take your battery out and go take it somewhere to where there's a charge. So if you go park at the basketball court, you can take the battery out, walk into the building, and plug it into one of their outlets in the building near the basketball court. Or if you're in a restaurant, you can take it in with you and plug it in um, and catch a few percentage points of a charge, and that'll help you get over the hump to go the extra distance. And at night, you don't have to pay for the charging station. You don't have to find a charging station. You can just take it up uh, and charge. But I think it's a, a must to have if you're in China, is the e-bike. Oh, it really is. It's uh, You do that initial purchase, and it's not much, by the way. Like that new that, new that you're talking about, that's only going to set you back about 550 US dollars. Oh yeah, that's cheap. For a brand new yeah. one. And uh, once you've done that, you're set because charging it costs nothing. That's like, you know, boiling water. You're just using electricity from your wall. And, no insurance, uh, yeah. no gas, no any uh, no other expenses. You pay for that, that's it. And that's your means around the city. Yeah, and uh, you you know, you buy a car and it gets a problem and it costs a fortune to fix it, right? That is not an issue with the news. Anytime you get a, uh, a problem, there'll be mechanics all around the city. If you bought a new, you can go to the special new mechanics. All these guys are going to fix your bike essentially for free. Mm. Um, maybe if they have to replace a part, you'll pay for the part. But well, Patton's battery was broken mm. and uh, it kept messing up on him. But every time he would take it in, they would fix it for free. So they weren't giving him a new battery, but they were fixing it and it would last him a couple of months and then it would cut out on him again and he would take it back. In. So they had pretty good customers. Oh yeah, so it's super convenient and it's taken over the city. Yeah, and a cool thing about it is they have, uh, in Chinese cities they'll have the main road that the cars drive yeah. on, and then they have another road on the side of that road for e-bikes. Yeah, two roads. And it's, a, it's incredible because you get on your e-bike lane and then all of a sudden you're in a different world. And uh, you're driving around and there's a bunch of e-bikes cruising around, you feel like you're in Mario Kart or something. There's, nobody follows the rules. Constantly there's people driving the opposite direction and uh, you have to watch for that. And then you'll cut out in front of the guy. You don't have a green light, but there's trick ways to get on this side of the street without following the laws of the road. Um, but they have recently started cracking down on the two people on a bike. Sometimes you'll run into a cop and there'll be a cop waiting at an at a intersection and then he'll make you get off and maybe he'll fine you for having two people on a bike. Yeah. But you routinely see three, four people hopping on an e-bike going somewhere. Be the mom uh, and two kids. kids and then maybe like a, an infant. And they're all piled on an e-bike. Yeah, and when the cops stop you, they're not a-holes about it. Mm. They, um, they're they very respectful. Sometimes they'll even give you an attention before they like, go on to arrest you. And when they finally fine you, um, it's only ever going to be a $2 fine, tops. 
and or uh, this happened the other day. They're cracking down on helmets. Mm. You have to wear a helmet now. Uh, they will. Uh, <laughs> they was they stopped us in in front of a shop and said, "Where's your helmet?" And we said, "We don't have it." They said, "Okay, uh, this shop right here sells helmets. You can go and buy one." So we went and bought the helmet, and we we're on our way. But. Uh, yeah, that's so, a nice alternative. Instead of getting the fee, use the fee to pay for the item that you're missing. <laughs> yeah, that's, which is nice. Yeah, they're trying to help you. Now, when you do pay the fee, is it cash? It's uh, not, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so it's not. So at least you don't get like the ticket system that we have in the United States, where you get written a, a citation or a ticket or whatever, and then you have to wait a few months, and then maybe you have to go to court, and then you have to pay it online or something. No, you can just pay it right there, which is how it should be everywhere. Yeah, so they're super fun to ride, and <clears throat> what else can we say? There's, for some reason, the Chinese don't like them so much. I think they see e-bikes as kind of like you're not the upper class of society. E-bikes yeah. are for the poorer people that can't afford cars. But foreigners love them. When foreigners, foreigners come here, they love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah foreigners are all Because it's so cool for us. Like uh, it's just it's like a little scooter that you cruise around in the streets, and it's like you're breaking the rules, but it's you're not. You're not breaking. The rules. Uh, and they're starting to pick up. You may have seen this in the West. They're starting to kind of get an e-bike culture, kind of, with the um, the scooters, the electric scooters that you get on. You pay a dollar to start riding, and then it charges you a little bit for every mile you go. Uh, that's and actually the first ones I saw in the United States were from the company Xiaomi, which is a Chinese company. And uh, so you're starting to see that culture kind of creep in the United States. And my brother, he lives in Atlanta, and he was he was telling me that they're even thinking about building a lane specifically for electronic vehicles and bicycles, um, which would be that's almost like just like uh, China. That would be the same thing as China. And they're starting to not just get the scooters. If you've noticed, they also have electronic bikes now, where you can pay the dollar, you start riding on a bike. Um, and then there's another one that you sit down on that's kind of like a scooter, but it has a seat. So you're starting to, I think, Murray's talked about this, and I think you uh, will see this in the West in another, what, 10 years probably? Yeah. We need it, is the thing, we need, is it. We need it. Yeah, I don't like, know. Like, I want that. this. Our, is, does the West have clogged city streets? Oh, cars? yeah, our traffic is cool. Yeah, it seems like the easy fix. Yeah, it seems like the vehicles still here are, you're, you're gonna get clogged up in the traffic, but if you're on the bike, the bikes do not get clogged. The bikes are the, the fastest way to get around the city a lot of the time. Really the only negative I would say is you're kind of exposed to the elements. So if, yeah. you're, if you drive a motorcycle in the US, you know what that's all about, is because like if it's raining, you're gonna get rained on. If it's cold outside, you're in the cold. If it's hot, you're in the heat. Uh, like today is ridiculously hot and we're cruising around in the heat. You get a little bit of wind out, but yeah, it's, that's really the only thing is being exposed to the elements. But people get creative with that. Like there's uh, a thing I've seen where it kind of hooks onto the e-bike and it goes all the way over you, protect you from the sun, protect you from rain. And then uh, there's another one where you can put on like this coat thing and put your hands in the gloves and that protects you from the cold. So there's ways people get around it. That's something that in the West we would have to get over is the I guess the aesthetic part of it where you kind of look um, a little bit ghetto is because you have to put all this extra stuff on it, it looks a little bit trashy maybe yeah. and a western person you know it's like it's the American dream have the car have the house uh, have the family and that's the American dream and so if you cruise around an e-bike maybe you're not living that American dream but I feel like with millennials and the new generations in the west we're kind of getting away from that thought process a little bit, and people are a little bit more open-minded with their travel, uh, with their how they get around, and so I feel like this will be popular. So watch out for it. Oh yeah, you're gonna see your young hipsters on these bikes in no time. But yeah, e-bikes, they're freaking awesome. If you come to China, you gotta get some. <laughs> All right guys, see you next time. <laughs> All right, come on guys, let's uh, go over here. I've got something I'd like to show you. <clears throat> okay. Okay, this baby right here, this is the single greatest purchase I've made my entire time in China. As soon as I arrived, people told me, Mari, you've got to buy an e-bike. I didn't take them seriously, and I should have. Because uh, as soon as I bought this, my life changed completely, okay? Before I bought this, all right, take a look at this. This is what I was riding on. This is my, for the first three months, this was how I got around China, okay? This is a share bike. 
um, and its max speed is about 14 miles an hour. This is max speed is about 25 miles an hour. Big difference, okay? Furthermore, this can go about 30 miles on a full battery. And you're wondering how much did it cost for such a great, a beautiful looking thing. This only cost me 200 US dollars. I'm, I'm not kidding, 200 US dollars. You wanna charge it, full battery, you can charge it up, do it at night, it only takes eight hours. That's gonna set you back about 30 cents, believe it or not. And uh, yeah, it's everything about it's great. Like today, you can tell I'm sweating. It's a super hot day. But as soon as you hop on this, you're, you're not, you're not pedaling. You're not getting hotter. You've got the wind in your hair and uh, it makes life bearable in the summer. Winter, uh, look, I don't have it right now. Maybe come over here. I'll show you. In winter, you're going to wear things that make you uh, warmer. So for example, I've got gloves that I'll put on like these, these gloves here. And uh, you're going to wear that in winter. Your hands go in right through these and they're nice and snug in there. It's uh, it's super warm. You're gonna put you're gonna put this thing on too. I don't know if you can see, but you're gonna put you're gonna put your body through here like this, and it's gonna keep you warm as a pumpkin, man. It's just lovely. And so yeah. yeah that, anyway, um, so if you come to China, I highly recommend uh, buying one or renting one at least, just to see what it's all about. Uh, E-bikes are um, very popular here uh, for two reasons. One, the country's trying not to pollute so much because they are worried about the air pollution and these things are electric, so it helps a little bit. Uh, two, they're just so cheap and uh, everyone's getting on them. And personally, I think uh, this is the future. You're looking at it. 20 years, 30 years from now, every major city around the world will be flooded with these things, so uh, yeah, look out.